Listen closely. Something fascinating is about to occur. A small YouTuber is opening up her channel once more to the world. Inside the factory of new ideas, well wishes, and insanity, she is hoping to make something quite extraordinary. This is Kiss Closure of the One Woman. Hello, hello. Welcome. I've been thinking ways to revitalize this channel and make it something more than just a passing craze. It's been a couple of years since my last proper post and out of deep respect to those who are still subscribed to me, I wanted to keep the channel alive. And why not venture into movie reviews and arts films again? The things I want to talk about but somehow lost hope in myself. Well, no more. And I'll prove this by tackling one of the most eccentric characters ever created, Willy Wonka. There's an enigma to this character, a ruse, a mystery, and quite possibly a deeply disturbing horror. He's been a fascination of film ever since the book came out in 1964 by Roald Dahl. I have read the book and it is a fascinating bit of literature with some minor additions that weren't in the first movie, aka the good movie, because two other adaptations in and the world seems more fascinated with the surrealism of Wonka that they miss out entirely on the intensely ironic humor. Because at heart, I believe it is a kind of tragedy, but not tragic, tragic, more of a satire mixed with inescapable truths. It depends on how you see the story. For me, nothing exemplifies the hidden satire than this scene. Try some of my grass. Eat my grass indeed. Who can take a sunrise, sprinkle it with dew, the candy man can. Okay, let's begin. Everyone knows the story by now, at least if you've watched the first movie. The world's greatest chocolatier, after a prolonged absence from the world, invites five lucky winners of the golden ticket. The concept itself is quite fascinating. And to the five people who find them will come the most fabulous prize one could wish for. A lifetime supply of chocolate. Think of it in terms of great dreams in our lives. How we are all racing to be something but very few ever do make it. It's a tragedy of life that echoes even deeper the longer the film goes on. The second movie played hard on this aspect with the Bucket family telling Charlie, anyone can win. Everyone has a chance, Charlie. But is that really the case? Border Jack, the kids are going to find the golden tickets are the ones who can afford to buy candy bars every day. One fascinating thing I love about the premise of this movie is that apparently everyone is addicted to chocolate. They go nuts for it in all these universes. Well, the most recent one might have just been about actual drugs with the way these people were reacting. It might grasp indeed. But it also shares something about what we place our value on. Think about it. The whole world, whole factories, whole countries, whole families willing to sacrifice the little they have for just one chance in billions. What does it do to the world? What is chocolate to us? I have a strange theory about that for the end, so stick around and it's going to be a wheezy, fizzy gobstopper of an idea. So the five kids are chosen and traumatized. The original book is brilliant in presenting this, with fascinating poems that cut at your heartstrings the moment you read them. They share an indelible lesson, a wise reasoning that cannot be refuted, and if you are wise, you would listen. But we seldom do. If you are wise, you'll listen to me. It's a powerful story that does something very few movies are willing to do today. Actually teach a good moral. As four of the kids who have a flaw in their character are shown to be incapable of winning in the end. However, this modern adaptations of Wonka's story often leave out the good moral in lieu of the spectacle, the magic, the insanity. Bravo! Well done! And I think that this kind of storytelling may just be the greatest tragedy of our current media landscape. Sure, it looks grand, beautiful, and even clever some of the time, but it's missing the heart of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. While old stories sort to of teach, inspire, and make us better people in the end, today, what do we have? I just watched the trailer to the Godzilla and Kong movie and it is bizarre. But go back to the moral lessons. Children shouldn't be greedy. Develop good habits because bad ones will destroy you. Parents shouldn't spoil their kids. Don't let entertainment or TV control your life. Powerful lessons that I'm still trying to catch up with. The Oompa Loompas dishing out the punishment, making sure every kid gets what's due for them. The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. <laughs> I see it like the world itself. If you have a flaw in your character, the world will surely exploit it. Whether it lies to you, patronizes you, or annoys you. 
That's why Wonka's portrayal in the first movie is absolutely brilliant. No one knows if what he's saying is true or false. Gene Wilder is a fascinating actor who understood Wonka more than any other adaptation. He chose to use a walking stick in his first appearance in order to constantly remind the audience that he's not to be trusted. The same echoes in the book but with even more sinister tones if you read in between the lines. He's not coming to rescue them from their worst flaws, quite the opposite. My chocolate. My beautiful chocolate. That's why his nonchalant attitude as the kids are swept off into near certain death is so perfect. Wait, does that make me sound evil? Hopefully not. Hell. Police. But if you peel away the humor and the fact that no one read the small print, read the small print and there does seem to be a lot of it. Oh. Oh. Then the Uncle Loompa's really joking, Grandpa. Of course they're joking. That boy will be fine. Then these kids died because of one single flaw in their character. Rather hard to bear. The tragedy of life is this. If you don't learn, if you don't change, if you don't adapt, you'll succumb. And it's not about being rich though. Money is a welcome friend in this hard world. It's not about being beautiful. It's about being wise. A wise man can face anything that comes the way. The house burns down, the wise man finds a way to build something new. The stock prices fall, the wise man finds another way. Terrible addictions take over, the wise man pulls himself out of it. Horrible habits kick in, the wise man keeps changing bit by bit. Or if nothing positive seems to be coming over the horizon, the wise man still finds a reason to smile. I think this is best presented by Wonka's insane poem during the riverboat ride. There's no earthly way of knowing which direction they are going. There's no knowing where they're rowing or which way the river is flowing. Not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing. For the rowers keep on rowing and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing. That's life. Life keeps going at a pace we can't stop it. And there's no telling what tomorrow brings. No way of knowing what surprises or disasters wait around the next bend. Time just keeps on flowing. <laughs> then we have little Charlie Bucket. Well, you're just lucky to be here, aren't you? The last survivor who inherits the factory, right? Charlie Bucket was the luckiest boy in the entire world. No. Boulder Dash. This is so wrong, I cannot even stress this enough. Remember the message from the beginning, you can't trust Willy Wonka. That's the whole point of the story. A life-changing event is not just going to fall off the roof. Well, Charlie is told of one button that Wonka has never pressed before. A button that will literally shoot them up into the sky, giving him the whole factory. You're giving Charlie the- I can't go on forever. So who can I trust to run the factory when I leave? Wonka wants a child that he can train to think like him, which can be a very powerful and hopeful ending if he took the lesson. With the right guidance, any child, any person can be raised well enough to be just as creative and as strong-willed as Wonka. In my head canon, I still believe Wonka was lying the whole time and that the worst flaw of character is blind belief. Someone who would willingly go along with any grand idea even if it made no sense at all. Sure, being greedy is bad, having bad habits, being spoiled leads you down a dangerous road and loving too much entertainment will just waste your life. But believing without proof, it reminds me of gambling. All those people spending thousands to earn hundreds while hoping they'll make millions. It's another great tragedy of our lives. I would be lying if I said I never tried my hand at gambling. <laughs> but just briefly because I quickly lost interest in it, thankfully. But even trying out YouTube is a gamble in itself, which may or may not pay off. So the worst flaw of character is believing everything is going to be okay without putting in the effort, the study, the wisdom, the trial and error, the building of our willpower. Or even just believing that everything's going to be okay because you have a house or a family or a job. Things can change on a dime. Everything could go haywire. Even in religious circles, people are asked to test and see if it's true. Study for yourself and don't just blindly enrich your pastor. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. So in my head canon, when Charlie pressed that button, one of two things happened. First, they died. <laughs> because Wonka simply lied about what the elevator could do and Charlie believed him. It's an elevator. It's a Wonkavator. An elevator can only go up and down, but the Wonkavator can go sideways and slantways and long ways and back ways and square ways? ways and front ways and any other ways that you can think of. Go ahead, Charlie. Me? There it goes. In the book, it also ends very oddly, I might say. We see the children in different states of, well, 
and Wonka quickly rushes the family into his factory is a bit of a strange ending because there's one key thing they're missing. Willy Wonka never leaves the factory, nor do the Oompa Loompas, only the chocolate leaves the factory and that's why it's so precious, that's why people crave it so much, apart from its deliciousness. It is the whole mystery of Wonka that makes him so special. The adaptations that try to dig into his backstory are ruining that for us because it's a mystery, the fact that no one understands how he thinks. Nobody ever goes in. Nobody ever comes out. So I dread to imagine what the next 50 years would be like for Charlie as his family slowly dies away and he's left alone with the Oompa Loompas, seeing as Wonka never had a family and therefore in 70 years he may have to repeat the whole story again. Five more golden tickets, four unlucky children and one to continue on after Charlie dies. This is the tragedy I want to talk about most, the tragedy of too much success or even unexpected success. Strange as it is to say, when you think you have it all, you may have nothing at all. And that I leave for you to ponder because even I don't know what it really means. But you could tell me in the comments how you interpret this. As for me, I think about it in terms of the beauty standards of our world. And now with the emergence of AI characters, we may be making ourselves obsolete as a human race because they are going to be the fairest and the beautifulest of them all. The only thing that will come out while we are trapped within our own mentality is the chocolate. Or most simply, our lives will have no other meaning than entertainment and content. No family, no friends, or even shared new ideas. And that, I think, is the tragedy of Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory. I was worried it was getting a little dodgy in the middle part, but then that finale, <laughs> wow! Rather gloomy, yeah, but I want this challenge to be looking beyond the surface of media, in a hopeful tone or a sad tone, but still trying to really understand it in its truest sense. Subscribe and we'll keep chatting. Thanks guys.